Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and it's time for part two of the Q&A, so uh, let's go ahead and get to that first question. Hi Jason, why are you using collars when benching lately? Yeah, I've actually been throwing my little uh, collars on that I bought on Amazon to take to the gym with me. Okay, so why am I throwing collars on? So that I don't have plates slip off the side. Yes, I know I don't do grinders. Yes, I know that my bar moves smooth and I'm unlikely to get much plate movement. However, I don't want to risk it unbalancing my bar at all and messing up my balance and my uh, speed and everything. Now, a lot of people are like, isn't that dangerous? You're, you're training without a spotter. Training without a spotter. And you've got collars on there. What happens if you get stuck under the bar? I've demonstrated this on camera before. Haven't I? Didn't I do that sometime back? I've put up to, what, 315 on the bar, let it come down, hit me in the chest, and then stood up with it. Uh, guys, I've only been using 275 lately, and even with 315, I have no trouble whatsoever if 315 drops and hits me in the chest of me rolling it. Actually, I can just bounce it with one bounce down to my waist and sitting up, and then it's sitting in my lap on my legs, and you just stand up with it, pick it up and set it on the floor. It's not that difficult. Now, people would say, oh my gosh, but what if it falls on your neck? How, how's the bar going to fall on my neck? How is that even possible? My neck is inside the J-hooks. It's inside the uprights. The bar doesn't have a path to get there. The bar doesn't have a path to get there. Furthermore, I know how to bench press. If you know how to bench press, at no point as the bar, other than you're racking and unracking, and that's not where you get hurt. Uh, because if you are failing to lock out, you do not need to push the bar over your face. This is basic safety. This is stuff that everyone should know before they do a bench press. When you go to fail a bench press, if something goes wrong and you're gonna miss the lockout, do you try to rack it? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You need to let the bar come back down to your chest, push it back towards your feet, come back down to your chest and put it up. But if your neck is inside the J-hooks, uh, it shouldn't be able to get to your neck anyways. And like I said, if it comes down, it's not going to be after you lock it. You should never, ever let the bar drift out of its bar path until you are fully locked, whether you're racking or unracking. That's not where you're going to get into trouble accordingly. It's going to be when you fail a lockout. Well, you need to let the bar come back down. You need to put it on your lap and stand up with it. Sometimes called the roll of shame. I call it the bounce of shame because you can usually just bounce it down with one movement. If it's a weight you're actually capable of pressing off your chest, and that's the problem. Ego lifters are pressing weights that they can't press off their chest from a paw. So even if you're fatigued, you should be able to bounce it back down to your stomach all the way to your waist in a half a second. Stand up with it. People are like, well, you could tip the bar. You know what? People who tip bars need to be charged with serious crimes when they hurt someone. They need to be charged with assault when you hit somebody. That's stupid. That's absolutely stupid. Uh, and if that's the way that you think you're supposed to train, you have no business being in the gym around other people. All right? You have no business at all. Uh, you're an idiot who's going to hurt people. It's just basic common sense and common safety, guys. So, no, there's no reason to have uh, not clamp the bar on a bench press because you shouldn't let the plate slide off one side because what happens? Stuff hits things, it breaks people's property, hurts people, flips over. That's sheer ignorance. That's sheer ignorance. And I hopefully none of my followers or people who follow my, my work on here are stupid enough to do something like that. It's just sheer ignorance. Uh, and it just has no place in the gym. All right, next question. It's proven that in hypocaloric and isocaloric dish conditions, you can gain strength without size thanks to CNS adaptation. Not advanced lifters, it's not. My controversial question is, in and hypercaloric condition, that means a calorie surplus, can you actually gain strength but fail to gain size? Like, as an example, not getting enough protein or staying in a low rep range, two to four reps, or not sleeping much, or doing too much volume that would cause some sort of size regression, if that's even possible to actually lose size in a surplus? Uh, okay, no, it, it's not possible. You are absolutely never, ever, ever, ever going to gain strength on any big exercise when in a calorie surplus and not gain at least a small amount of muscle in the muscles. In fact, it doesn't even happen in isocaloric diets. 
the people who you're talking about who gain strength without gaining muscle uh, when in a calorie deficit sometimes actually still gain muscle anyways it's that they're getting just enough protein and enough recovery that they're gaining small amounts of muscle um, as far as the pure CNS adaptations the only people who gain strength without gaining size are complete noobs complete noobs or people who have trained purely for hypertrophy and they go to a very heavy low rep program they they can make CNS adaptations for a very 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 short period of time without gaining muscle by very short I'm talking no more than three weeks uh, noobs maybe six to eight weeks after that you're absolutely going to gain muscle from your strength increase absolutely unavoidable so you're talking about very very short lived conditions in which this is possible uh, so we go back to the other point is it possible to lose muscle while gaining strength no absolutely not doesn't happen uh, are you going to gain strength in a calorie surplus without gaining size yes only if you're in the noob if you're a complete noob that's it like you've never been to a gym before you just started lifting weights you might uh, a more experienced lifter, even if they switch to a style of training like they've been doing purely hypertrophy work, they go on a calorie surplus and they go to two or three rep sets, uh, they will absolutely gain muscle while in the calorie surplus. Absolutely. That's uh, what should happen anyways. You'll gain muscle in a calorie surplus unless you're following a horrific diet that doesn't have enough carbs or protein. Like if you did a deep ketogenic diet, uh, <laughs> you might not. But... Uh, Generally, if you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to gain muscle even if you don't increase strength. It's just not going to be very much. It's going to be a very, very, very tiny amount. Uh, so, so no, no, absolutely not. The strength gain will correlate with muscle gains if you're overeating pretty much every single time. Uh, not going to happen. Not something you should worry about. All right, next question. Jason, I play football in college and throughout the season I have lost a clear amount of muscle and strength. We only lift once, maybe twice a week to maintain. Is recomp possible? Uh, what would be the best, best way to get back? Uh, I was bigger and leaner before season. All right. Uh, you need to follow a two-day-a-week full body program in season. All right. I like to see concurrent training for in-season field athletes twice a week. You need to maintain your strength. All right. Do not let the weight on the bar regress. Now, you only have to train two days a week, so you shouldn't be losing size. If you are losing size and strength in season and you know that you're following a proper program, uh, th this shouldn't be a problem. You should be able to maintain. The, the only time this is going to become an issue, like you feel like you were bigger and leaner before, the only difference might be drugs. If you came off some of your gear uh, to make sure you're cleaner for the in-season drug testing, uh, that's your explanation. Now, if that's not the case, uh, you're either completely clean or you stayed on whatever you were on. You, should, you shouldn't be getting fatter in season. Uh, absolutely not. All that playing and conditioning and practice should be keeping you pretty lean. Uh, you might just be losing some muscle glycogen storage due to uh, less training volume. But truth be told, uh, you can absolutely maintain in season as long as your nutrition and sleep are on point and you follow some proper concurrent training. I'd like to see a heavy day, and I'd like to see a volume day for you every week, uh, one of each, and you need to do that. You need to do your big basic lifts, your squats, your, your power cleans, you know, your push presses, your bench press, all the stuff that you're normally doing. I don't know what your specific routine looks like for your team, uh, but yeah, twice a week. Now, you're talking about recomping in season. You need to forget that. If you're trying to recomp in season, you, you're gonna risk losing your scholarship, but uh, you can't you can't play that game. Your in season needs to be focused upon strength and size maintenance in the gym. That's what you have to focus on. You have to have that extra energy to play for your practice for everything else. Uh, you're not going to recomp in season. If you do, your performance is going to suffer on the field. You just don't, you can't afford that. You absolutely can't afford that. But if you pick an intelligently structured concurrent training system twice a week, you should be able to keep what you had and if you don't keep it all you're going to keep 98 percent of it the only difference is you might lose a little bit of glycogen storage but you know what that's going to come back in one week one week of getting your carbs back up high enough and less conditioning in season and all of that should come back within one week 
Uh, so that's not really a permanent loss, that's just transient storage factors. Uh, I really wouldn't sweat that. All right, next question. I've always had a goal of a 200 kilogram squat. Uh, for my American viewers, that's 441 pounds. However, I recently took up BJJ and all my lifts tanked by about 30%. I was doing mad cows variation. I then tore my groin grappling. Should I give up pushing my strength goals as BJJ is hammering my body? No, you need to recover from your groin pull. You need to adapt to all your practice and conditioning involved with the BJJ and then start bringing your lifts back up. Uh, there are plenty of people out there who are brutally strong who do BJJ. Uh, my God, I've seen guys who do BJJ who squat 500 pounds raw. All right, they are out there. It can be done. You're going to have to adapt to all of your grappling and conditioning work, and that could take you up to six months. And you're going to have to heal from that groin pull. So once you've healed, once you've healed, and then you've had six months to adapt to all the conditioning and the practice, your lifts should start going back up and you should be able to go back and focus on the strength again. But again, you're going to have to balance your training with all of it. You're going to have to focus on sleep, 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 recovery, getting enough carbohydrates and protein in. All right, that's going to be your focus. You can't have any nutritional deficiencies and you can't be sleep deprived or it's not going to work. Like if you're one of those guys who like to go out and party on Friday night, uh, you're going to have to pick. Do you want to get stronger? Or do you want to go party on Friday nights? You can't have both at that point. You're, you're, you have too many irons in the fire that you can't afford stuff that might cost you sleep or recovery. It just can't be done. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time in part three.